Hello, everyone. My name is Fong Lee. I'm the president and CFO of MicroStrategy, and I am extremely excited for our second executive webinar series. And today I have here with me Mayank Srivastava, who is the director of data engineering at Cox Automotive. Welcome, Mayank. Thanks for taking your time. Thank you. Perhaps we can start. Uh, just let everybody know a little bit about yourself uh, and about Cox Automotive. Thanks, Fong. Uh, so I am Mayank Srivastava, and I lead the report and data platform at Cox Automotive uh, DSS division. And essentially, I've been in this area for uh, you know close to like 15 years now, and uh, I have uh, uh, you know set up a completely new stack for uh, report development which uh, includes some of the leading edge uh, technologies, uh, uh, Snowflake and MicroStrategy. And then also by heart, I am a innovator, right? So I have been innovation, uh, innovating in different technologies for a long time. Uh, I am proud to share that I got the chairman award for innovation at Sun Microsystems uh, out of like almost 40,000 employees. I have also won several group uh, innovation awards and definitely we have been doing some extremely innovating things with MicroStrategy reporting tool. Um, the other thing is like I have a very strong career in building the team from grounds up and uh, making sure we have the right skills and the flexibility to scale up and scale down uh, depending on the requirements of the business. Um, as far as Cox is concerned, uh, Cox Automotive is uh, focused on automobile industry. Uh, it has multiple cloud services. And uh, the main uh, thing which Cox provides is uh, acceleration of the digital adoption at this time. Uh, you'll be happy to know that 70% of all car buying uh, at this time touches Cox Automotive products. Some of them you may heard of like uh, Auto Trader, Kelly Blue Book, and we manage the entire, you know, from buying to ownership to selling experience. Uh, Cox also provides uh, real-time market insights uh, to lead to actionable intelligence. And these are very, very useful for auto industry dealerships and uh, uh, manufacturers and dealer groups in terms of, you know, providing economic impact uh, leading indicators or, you know, for both uh, like the auto industry and for Cox. So it is, uh, you know, very prominent in this area and we are very happy to provide these services uh, to the auto industry to be successful. Great, well, that's impressive. Uh, the intersection of uh, innovation, uh, analytics and now uh, the auto industry, which uh, as, as you know, many know is going through its own digital transformation. And the fact that you touch 70% of car buying uh, is an awesome statistic. Um, I watched your presentation for MicroStrategy World a few weeks ago. And there you also talked about some very impressive performance metrics uh, related to the work that you're doing specifically now at Cox. Can you share some of those metrics? In terms of, uh, you know, the MicroStrategy tool, which we are adopting in a big way in uh, Cox Automotive DSS division. Uh, we started with X time and uh, uh, we did a thorough evaluation of our stack. And uh, uh, the stack which we have selected is uh, AWS uh, with Snowflake managed services and MicroStrategy, right? So uh, some of the things which we are uh, doing at a very you know, high priority is creating a new reporting platform and migrating our existing uh, reports over to there. So the benefits which we see uh, with this new technology stack, especially with MicroStrategy, is the speed of development, uh, especially the dossiers product, which we have embraced uh, all out. Uh, it just provides amazing uh, capabilities of uh, quickly building reports, innovating on them, making sure it meets the user expectations. Uh, so um, we can also take like uh, corrective actions very quickly once somebody points out any kind of enhancements you know, to the report. And uh, some of the key features which our customers have been finding very useful 
is the collaborative nature of this product, right? Because they can take notes and they can interact with other peers and colleagues to make sure like uh, things are well understood, uh, which are appearing in the report. So uh, certain aspects of it are extremely exciting to us and to our customers and to our partners. Uh, things like uh, self uh, scheduling of the reports, self publishing of the reports, and also being able to do quite a bit of development um, of the reports, right? So all this is uh, what we are, uh, you know, embarking on this exciting journey and, and some of it is already in production very successfully. Uh, some of it is coming very shortly uh, for our customers. Well, it seems like you've done a lot at the, uh, I'll call it the client and the UI layer to improve the experience to your point, using dossiers, using collaboration, getting quick feedback from the end users. Let's go down a level below that and talk about the data layer, because some of the things you're doing there are truly innovative. Uh, and, you know, on your cube refresh strategy and, and near real time analytics, talk to us about what you've done there, how you've done it, and, and what the impact is on performance and cost as a result. So I'm glad you asked that question because that's uh, sort of you know our uh, main success uh, in terms of putting this stack together. Um, so the the whole thing about this is the report perform extremely well when it can be served the data from the cube. At the same time, like cube takes certain finite time to go through its refresh cycle. Um, so we have to make the cubes extremely smart by controlling its size and controlling the refresh cycles. So few things which we have uh, taken, you know, in, in our architecture is when, whenever we are looking at a report or a dashboard, uh, not all data comes in real time. So the data volatility differs. Uh, what we have analyzed is uh, almost, uh, 60% of the data is, which can be loaded in batch, uh, close to about 20% of the uh, data may need, uh, you know, some kind of uh, couple of hours refreshes and some of the data may need near real time. When I say near real time for us, it means more like 10 to 15 minutes um, interval. And then uh, only about five to 10% of the data needs you know, within subsequent kind of uh, information in the report. So if we categorize uh, the get data differently, we can make our cube refreshment strategy accordingly. So for some something like subsecond kind of a thing information, which is generally limited to 5%, as I said, um, it's difficult to go through the cube because as I said, cube takes certain finite time to refresh. So it's better to just have a live connect, which Dozius provides us uh, connecting directly to that data source. Um, uh, where, which can, can be refreshed through the streaming. Uh, <clears throat> but the cube uh, can be refreshed in a, in a full and uh, incremental fashion. And whenever we are looking at near real time where you can tolerate a few minutes of delay, the cube is very effective by going through the incremental refreshes. Uh, and the incremental refreshes uh, uh, obviously will be even more powerful if you provide the incremental data for those, those refresh. So that's the architecture which we have put together. It's extremely strong. Uh, Snowflake supports it very well, but the beauty of it is on top of it, the micro strategy cubes are very you know, flexible in terms of doing full refreshes uh, and incremental refreshes. And those incremental refreshes have allowed us to reach a stage where we can provide the reports in which appears to the end users like real time reports and highly performing all the time, uh, you know, so that that's that's the architecture which MicroStrategy allows us to achieve out of the box, uh, which is which is very very powerful. Um, and as far as the customers are concerned, the the advantage they have is uh, they always look at the latest data, and they can always make decisions based on you know what is happening uh, in real time. At times they need to do that, especially in auto industry. If they are looking at things like, you know, uh, uh, if, if if there are no shows and, and and certain appointments are not you know made, then they can look at that and say, okay, can we accommodate more people quickly and stuff like that, right? So, uh, 
um, some of those decisions are very, very useful uh, for our industry to be very profitable uh, using micro strategy reports. You know, that's fascinating. You're, you're solving a problem that I think a lot of uh, our viewers and a lot of our customers are trying to figure out, which is uh, the, the end user demand for really real time up to the second data needs for large volumes of data and the fact that you segmented it between what you really need to refresh immediately versus what can be refreshed on an hourly or daily basis uh, makes a ton of sense. Uh, what is the cost impact of the fact that you've been able to segment your data that way? Meaning, uh, have you actually seen a savings sort of in, in, in your stack or in the work that you're doing? So I'm glad you asked that question because that is uh, top of the mind of the management, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure in all organizations and mine also is to how much are we going to spend with this new stack, right? And everything is in the cloud. So the cloud, uh, the beauty of the cloud is the elasticity, like we can uh, pay as we use it. The best part about this is because the we are dealing with a limited set of data in a near real time means like every 10 or 15 minutes you have very small set of data to be processed and the cube refresh goes through that so the advantage of that is that cube actually the size of the cube goes down quite a bit and we have seen like uh, cube efficiency uh, you know uh, typically just 10 or 20 percent of the cube refresh is sufficient in, instead of doing 100%. And that shows all around, it shows in the servers which you are using to uh, process uh, your data engineering, it shows in the uh, layer which is refreshing the cube and it shows in the cube itself. So each and every step of that elastic cloud, there is a tremendous amount of saving. And, and we have seen it like, you know, uh, over a period of like a year or something, it will be an extremely substantial saving um, with this architecture. So I would say, uh, you know, definitely look at this uh, uh, presentation which I have made in the, the word because it will give you some good indicators as to how you can save a lot on your operational cost and also your development and also some of the resources which are required to do that development. Yeah, you know, I hear that time and time again is there, there is significantly increasing needs for data, uh, real time data. And so as a result, the compute costs can go up quite a bit. And yeah. uh, what you've done here is quite innovative where you're paying a vendor AWS, for example, on compute, Snowflake on throughput. And if you're able to reduce those metrics uh, using sort of the microstrategy stack, you're able to reduce your, your cost overall as an organization. I would imagine, uh, you know, a lot of folks that are listening are saying, hey, you know, this is awesome. What have you done? You've reduced costs and provided incremental value to the business. Uh, and that's what everyone sort of wants to be able to get to. How, how's your work been received uh, in the company? How, what are you hearing from folks and, and, and how are your internal customers reacting so far? Yeah, it has been received extremely positively. And I just wanted to add one more point uh, that if we build a cube efficiently, uh, if the reports are just hitting the cube to fetch the data and not really going to like the snowflake layer, there is no incremental data cost for reports to hit the cubes, right? So you are saving a lot uh, on, on your data platform um, there itself if your cubes are efficient. Because if you start taking the same data out of like a Snowflake or some database platform, not only is slow, it increases your cost quite a bit. So a smart cube strategy is the way to not only get performance, but do a lot of cost saving. Um, so since uh, it has been like a very successful architecture, um, the, the organization, uh, we are rolling it out into uh, other divisions um, of Cox Automotive. And also the other, uh, I should say the Cox universe, uh, we are uh, you know, being seen as the leading um, group in, in terms of the reporting stack architecture. And there are multiple uh, different uh, company um, divisions which are coming to us and asking us to help us uh, help them out in putting together this kind of architecture. So it, it's extremely uh, you know, well-received. Um, we have uh, 
gone from a team of something like seven who started with this and right now the team is closing on to 40 uh, to take this initiative forward in, in, in various forms in different divisions. So it is very successful and I, I would think like it will increase quite a bit more if the other organizations, uh, you know, based on the signals they are giving to to adopt this technology. So yeah, I'm very happy the direction which we have taken and the success which we have proved uh, both for our management and for our clients. Yeah, so, so tell me more about that, right? Like, uh, you know, for the, the, those who are following along here, Cox Automotive, you're using MicroStrategy and business intelligence for your internal uh, corporate customers, if you will, but you're also using them for your, your end customers, which are, are in many cases dealerships. Uh, tell me more about sort of the end customer usage of the data and the areas you've been able to innovate. That's the beauty of micro strategy because uh, the, the dossiers are very friendly in doing like the initial data exploration and, and analytics. Uh, also, uh, it is very good as uh, reporting, uh, you know, uh, for, for the external customers. So it, it serves a wide spectrum of the usage at Cox and uh, um, some of our internal reports are for executive insights. And uh, so far we had been on Tableau uh, doing that, but now we are planning to migrate out of Tableau and adopt um, micro strategy dossiers uh, for the same purpose uh, to build all the executive insights. And uh, uh, these, some of these executive insights are like, uh, return on investment calculations by the sales team uh, to sell to the new customers, right? And sometimes they can show that if you adopt our product, um, the ROI can be almost like 17 times or, or sometimes, you know, uh, close to that. And uh, also uh, the different like performance managers, program managers use these matrices uh, to, to sell uh, or, uh, you know, cross sell or upsell the product, right? Um, as far as, uh, uh, you know, external uh, customers are concerned, um, they use this product in um, multiple ways. So just wanted to let you know that the reports which we are developing are for, uh, uh, you know, external customers. So we have like thousands of customers in the cloud and, and this is not uh, internal IT uh, project for us. And uh, the reports are an integral part for making our product successful. And when it reaches to the end customers, they are very, um, you know, they benefit a lot to see like what can be done for uh, customer retention, what can they do for store optimization. Uh, they use it for employee compensation. Uh, one of the examples are recently uh, the, the dealership uh, launched a service for ride share. Um, and uh, we are providing some of that, uh, you know, behind the scenes integration with rideshare with the dealership. Um, so they they are moving out of, uh, you know, having the shuttle services for the customers. Like if you take your car for servicing, uh, sometimes they provide you shuttle services, sometimes they provide you rental cars, but they are now finding that the rideshare uh, may be a more beneficial way. Um, so they look at our reports and say, yeah, like, it's it's uh, more cost effective to use the ride share services for the customers as opposed to have like a shuttle and a driver and pay uh, all of that. So micro strategy reports is actually enabling them to to do that kind of uh, cost analysis and and start adopting some of the new practices in in their dealership. And uh, it's uh, you know spread all all across like they 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 do their expense management they do their inventory planning um, using micro strategy reports. So um, uh, the, the customers have to uh, basically look at, uh, uh, you know, the reports to find out the, the inventory and to optimize operations. And it's uh, uh, extremely well received these reports because uh, they see the benefit of uh, adopting our product, uh, which are largely proven um, through the data which comes out of this micro strategy reports. Yeah, you know, it's it's fascinating. Uh, you're sort of doing something that I think a lot of uh, folks in the BI world are trying to figure out, which is, uh, as a corporation, you're sitting on a wealth of information, external information, internal from third party data sources. And the fact that you're able to productize that and then monetize that 
uh, is an area I think a lot of companies are trying to figure out and you sort of have figured that out, which is awesome. Uh, you know, I love the 17 X ROI when someone's using your product or a micro strategy product at the dealer, uh, and the examples are quite, uh, quite rich there. Uh, what's next in that area? I, I assume this is just, you, you're just getting started in terms of providing data to your end customers and dealers and monetizing that. What other things are you thinking about right now? So uh, so, some of the things which uh, we are actively looking at is uh, moving more towards uh, predictive uh, reporting and, you know, just, just analyzing the behaviors and uh, letting our customers know like what proactive uh, measures uh, they can put in place um, so that they can meet um, uh, so, some, some of the demands which may be coming their way. Um, also uh, benchmarking and seeing like, you know, how um, a particular region is doing, as, uh, you know, compared to the other region for a particular make and model. So those, those kind of uh, uh, competitive analysis, predictive analysis um, and providing them actionable insights should be very, very useful um, for our dealers. We are somewhat uh, embarking uh, you know, uh, towards that. We have put together some small things, but there is a large uh, area which is still needs to be addressed there. Uh, the other thing is, as I mentioned on the self-serve side, so, so far is still uh, the, the reports which we are developing are uh, somewhat managed within Cox, but uh, we want to open it up and let our customers start developing, um, you know, reports and doing their own uh, analytics using MicroStrategy dossiers. The best thing about uh, MicroStrategy is it lets us uh, uh, mash up data from multiple sources. So it may be their, um, you know, data which is there in their spreadsheets locally, and then the data which we are providing as, as part of the data platform, which we expose to them. So they can actually take these multiple sources of data, mash it up and create reports or dashboard which suffices um, uh, their requirements. They are not just constrained by the data which we are producing here in terms of the reports. So all those uh, power of the tool, uh, we still have to unleash to our uh, you know, um, customers but they're very looking forward to it and they understand the, the strength of these. And um, you know, most of it goes through our monetization cycle. So, so we actually generate revenue out, out of it. Well, your, um, your accomplishments are impressive. And I, I think folks uh, have learned a lot from what you shared. Uh, the fact that you, you solved uh, the, the challenge of at scale, cost-effective, real-time, uh, analytics is impressive. Uh, the fact that you you sort of built an architecture based on Snowflake, AWS, and MicroStrategy, and done something that's fairly unique. You, you've used MicroStrategy to actually reduce your Snowflake and your AWS cost uh, is something I think a lot of people can learn from. And then obviously, you know, taking all that you've done in the analytics space and then generating revenue and revenue from customers and increasing that. Uh, it's, it's sort of like the holy grail that you've accomplished here. I'm sure folks want to know, you know, what tips would you give them? Like, you know, if someone is watching and listening or is talking to you and said, hey, I want to be able to do all those things too. Uh, I'm just getting started. What advice do you have for them? Um, so first of all, uh, start with what your business needs, right? So when you are looking at any kind of real-time analytics, um, we segregate your data into the volatile fashion, like what is, what is really required in the real time and what can happen in the batch, because that's the architecture you will need to adopt to be able to scale up and do all the cost optimization. Uh, parallelly, you can look at the, the technology stack, which uh, will provide you the maximum flexibility, uh, maximum optimization, um, just to share with you, like when we started this exercise, we started by evaluating over 16 different uh, established tools to see what will give us the, the flexibility and the scalability and the cost optimization, which we are looking for. Um, we chose MicroStrategy and, and we are extremely happy with that. Uh, we also chose Snowflake uh, because of various uh, you know, strengths it provides. 
so you should also look at your entire stack and look at what really you know will make you successful as a stack and uh, keep a little open um, minded about you know adopting something if you are not already using right so so uh, then obviously you'll have to look at the skill set of your team how you are going to retrain them in some of these new technologies and new architecture um, so prepare your training plan uh, for for the new skills uh, both in terms of the architecture and in terms of the development and programming at the same time like i'm i'm very happy because i have used uh, micro strategy professional services to to help us uh, lift um, you know some of these initial uh, expansion and uh, uh, they have been very useful they also provide the the kind of flexibility i was looking in the resources to be able to scale up and scale down as the business needs uh, fluctuate uh, so i would say um, you know um, pay attention to all that because all that will come into play when you are going to actually launch something like this into production um also look at your data you know the, the data can come from various sources and micro strategy is very strong uh, because you can connect to different kind of data sources you can connect to um, a, a database you can connect to google analytics you can connect to um, uh, big data you can connect to various kind of uh, you know email services which your organization may be using and do certain amount of data exploration to make sure like what kind of data curation and what kind of uh, data cycles will be required uh, for you to you know create a effective report uh, using the cube technology uh, which micro strategy provides and then um, uh, i would say select some friendly customers don't uh, you know just expose your report the first time to to customers who can be pretty critical i mean th th if they're critical in a friendly way, they are the best to so pilot it out um, because this is a new stack. You will have new framework. You will have new people. I mean, people working on new technology. So, so take some time to do that. But once you establish that, then of course you can scale up uh, very, very quickly. So um, uh, keep keep uh, you know all these things uh, you know planned uh, meticulously. Um, look for flexibility. Look for um, you know all the all the different requirement because you may have data requirements both internally and externally and what your customers need uh, and and what the micro strategy can provide you connections to all that so i would say um, uh, as long as uh, you you have uh, you know parallelly taking care of these things um, you should be pretty successful uh, at least with the stack which I am using here um, of Snowflake and MicroStrategy, it is a very successful, um, you know, uh, uh, journey for us so far. Well, Mayank, um, congratulations uh, on your success. Uh, I know you have a lot more work ahead of you, and this is a journey that that they, you know, is constantly ongoing. Uh, but the work that you've done uh, has touched a lot of folks all around uh, the U.S., whether it be through uh, Cox Automotive or one of your brands, Auto Trader, Kelly Blue Book, or with uh, your dealer customers. Uh, it's really cool when you see uh, that entire journey end to end uh, from, uh, you know, working with new platforms, uh, including MicroStrategy, to uh, transforming internally uh, to the end customer, uh, and then the ultimate end customer, which is the one who's buying or, or purchasing a vehicle. Uh, really cool to hear that story. Uh, sounds like you've done an amazing job. Uh, really appreciate all of your support of MicroStrategy, uh, our, pro our, our product and our professional services. And we look forward to continuing to work with you and see you continue to be successful. Uh, thank you so much. I And I also look forward. And one thing I just wanted to add, like the professional services of MicroStrategy, we are not only using limited to MicroStrategy, but they are also providing us the Snowflake uh, you know, expertise. So pretty much the entire stack um, uh, micro strategy is able to provide. So it's a little easier when we have to deal with like one organization and not spread ourselves very thin dealing with, you know, five different organizations. So um, I, we are very happy and, and thank you so much for, for making us, you know, so successful and it's a very nice product. I'm, you know, 
finding it more and more uh, to the clients and to our management. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. We're looking forward to continuing to partner with you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone so much. We'll now open it up for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those now. One of the first questions we did receive, Mayank, is for you. Um, you discuss Cox's data architecture as well as end users in depth. When it came to the internal users and champions, how did you generate support there? Uh, thank you for asking that question. So it's uh, definitely, you know, there is, there is a barrier of at, uh, when you're trying to get something adopted new in your organization. Uh, but at the same time, mm -hmm. when you present a compelling case, um, people do listen. And what makes it compelling is that what benefit the end users will be seeing, uh, what kind of cost optimization can we achieve, and how does it benefit our organization, either in terms of speed, monetization, uh, operational savings. So all that uh, comprehensively, uh, we have to build up a case uh, because there are different audiences and they want to consume different uh, content uh, to make them comfortable of moving towards this new direction. Uh, when you take up your business case and when you start that kind of analysis, you have to build it in the multifaceted manner to make sure like all the key stakeholders in the process and all the decision makers uh, buy in into that and they are fully comfortable. Um, so make sure uh, you have done your groundwork and uh, build up the case uh, with, with all the stakeholders to ultimately get them uh, you know, all excited and convinced about moving in this new journey. Wonderful. And I guess a, a follow up to that, and, and I'll let Fong jump in here as well as any advice that you have to a fellow executive who is trying to make a similar change in their organization? If they're trying to make a similar change in the organization, um, there are certain critical things they have to keep in uh, mind. Uh, number one is how quickly uh, they can actually move in that stack. Uh, so one thing is of course, getting the, the approval from the key stakeholders and management, but actually executing it within your organization is going to be a different challenge. So uh, you have to look at your uh, resourcing plan. You have to look at the emotional readiness of your team. Uh, you have to look at how the continuity of the business has to be maintained. Uh, it should not be a disrupt uh, in terms of the customer experience because they want a smooth transition uh, from one technology to the other. So, so minimize those bumps for the end users. Uh, and also internally, uh, look for wins, you know, early wins, because if you delay too much, uh, people will lose interest and people will start losing faith. So go for some uh, quick wins uh, where the convincing happens both at the customer and internal and getting a, a buy-in for your from your team within is also very critical. It's not only the buy-in from the stakeholders. All your team should be excited about moving in this new direction. Uh, so spend time, uh, you know, making sure that uh, they understand where you are headed. And uh, if they are all behind you, you will be successful. Wonderful. Um, one person did want to ask is, when did your journey begin? I guess, how long did this process take you from identifying from the 16 tools that you had identified and really narrowing it down in, in that process? Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tricky question. Uh, but uh, we started with the 16 um, some of the initial evaluations, which we did on those uh, 16, uh, were quick. Um, so we uh, adopted the process of elimination and said, okay, these are the reasons we can't go ahead with this tool. Uh, and we start the narrowing process. So from 16, we went to eight and then ultimately to four. And then the last four, we spent a lot of time evaluating it. So I would say the technical part of it uh, took us close to about three, two to three months time. Uh, but then after that was actually doing a detailed POC to convince the management. And uh, 
that was a gradual process. So we started getting approval gradually and uh, to spend you know certain um, kind of budget which were being allocated to us. So I would say the, the first one, uh, first report uh, which we were able to push out in production uh, was somewhere around, you know, end to end about six months time, five to six months. Uh, but we were able to do pilot before, before the production. Uh, but then it was scaling up very quickly from there onwards. So I would... I would say somewhere like about four months to go into pilot and about six months to launch some initial reports. And, but then from there onwards, you can scale up very, very quickly. Hey, hey Mike, maybe I can jump in here. We have a, uh, another question from the audience uh, that's uh, fairly specific. So how did you approach the shift from what you were using before MicroStrategy to now? Did you target specific use cases to transfer over, specific data sets, business areas? I think uh, you can see the line of questioning is, we wanna do what you did, but how do we get started? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing, like it's a mindset, and I would say we had a major mind shift in the terms that, okay, we are not going to build a report, we are going to build a report platform. And that was the main difference because we wanted to empower the end users as much as possible to go and build the report to their heart's content. That's what Dossiers provide, right? It's very friendly to the end users in terms of the visualization they want, the uh, the filtering they want, the, the drill up, drill downs they want. So it, it's very friendly and they are able to pick it up very quickly. Um, so once we decided, okay, we are building a report platform which is going to scale up and not focus on just individual reports. It gave us the kind of power and the scalability which we were looking for. And then we picked up like a, a business area and within that business area also, uh, we worked very closely with our product to make sure that that business area can provide immediate value to our organization, right? So with that, we started uh, prioritizing our work. And then we also wanted to prove our architecture. So we picked up some of the, uh, I should say, data marts uh, and the report platform, which we are building uh, to prove that this architecture can actually scale up. So it was a mix of uh, architecture, uh, uh, proving the architecture, uh, business requirements, and the kind of vision now we have in mind, which is the report platform and not like individual reports. So a mix of that, uh, and as I said, quick wins, right? So there are a list of uh, customers who are more friendly and open to give their input on the new technologies. So rope them in and, and pretty much get going uh, with this kind of prioritization. But you should have a roadmap, but in case you are hitting any kind of uh, roadblocks on any on one of them uh, be prepared to you know um, move um, to to your next backup but keep proceeding yeah I think that's that's good advice for for folks who think of a business intelligence uh, change or transformation it's fairly daunting because you might have something that's well embedded for years if not decades in the organization uh, getting executive buy-in, getting team buy-in and doing something quickly, right? Like, and, and I think, you know, using one specific use case or using one specific data set as the first step and then adding on top of that, what you did makes makes a ton of sense. Um, I don't think anyone wants to be told, hey, we're gonna go do a system transformation that's gonna take three years, multiple million dollars and you don't get any benefits till the end. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, we have another question here, and and by the way, uh, for those who are listening in, if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and type them in through the Q and A window, and and we'll uh, address them as they come through in order. The next question is: Do you have access to all third party Martech ad tech APIs to integrate the marketing performance data into your external client reporting? For example, Trade Desk, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn. So I think this question is generally about how are you integrating external data sets with your internal data sets to provide it to external customers? So thank you for asking that question. And we all know that to provide uh, valuable uh, and actionable insights, uh, the data needs to be consumed from multiple sources. And 
the good thing is like micro strategy has a lot of connectors to those popular um, uh, applications which were just mentioned and we are successfully using it to connect to google analytics we also have like uh, clickstream data so when we are doing um, marketing um, <clears throat> the campaign to cash kind of analytics it's very important to see like what is what working what is not working which channel is better uh, where the the customers uh, you know uh, are clicking to to ultimately move into the buy in situation so we have combined all these different sources of google analytics clickstream data email um, and our internal data and some of our partner data and uh, it's a it's a hybrid sum of it we combine it as part of the um, elt process to to make sure there is a uniform um, data lake on which we can build the data mart uh, but some of that uh, we are connecting directly like uh, google analytics and so on and just mashing up in the uh, micro strategy um, so yes micro strategy is out of the box connectivity to uh, almost all of these popular platform um, facebook linkedin twitter and so on and you should be able to utilize it uh, it depends like uh, for certain cases you may still like to do the elt uh, but uh, for your quick initial data discovery you should be able to just connect to these sources and um, see like what kind of trends are getting in and and provide something to your customers uh, rather quickly. Great. Um, <clears throat> next question, uh, the core external reporting platform that you're using, is that MicroStrategy or have you built something in-house or are you using another vendor in the tech stack? So external reporting platform is MicroStrategy for us at this time. It used to be um, Oracle Business Intelligence um, and uh, uh, we are moving out of that. Uh, and then we have a couple of other tools which are external facing, but in our new world, in our new stack, it's only micro strategy for the external um, facing reporting tool. And so far we have gotten very, very positive feedback about that, uh, especially with the, with the combination of Snowflake and also, as I said, uh, the end users, if they have any data in their spreadsheet, uh, Excel form, they can mash it up and create their reports into uh, MicroStrategy with this mashup. So uh, at this point, MicroStrategy is our external facing tool. Great. Um, next question uh, coming in from the audience. Uh, got a lot of questions coming in. This is great. Thanks, everyone. Uh, how did you ramp up your customers to use dossier to create their own reports versus having reports just prepared for them? So how are you getting them to the, the point where they, they have their own self-service data discovery and dashboarding? Um, so to reach to that point, there are multiple things which we have to take <clears> care <throat> of um, because we have uh, everything in the cloud and it's all multi-tenant. So first of all, uh, we need to make sure that the security integration is there in place. Um, so MicroStrategy provides a web API for integrating your application into the into the reporting to, to, to make sure like your data and your report is properly authenticated uh, and authorized. Also, um, the end users, there are certain training available uh, free of cost from MicroStrategy, uh, which gives them um, initial report building exercise. So they can do that. If they want certain uh, more advanced then MicroStrategy also has uh, an analysis uh, kind of training, analyst training, so they can even take that depending on to what level uh, the end users are interested. Uh, then you have to build your data sets which can scale up. And that was another reason uh, we chose Snowflake because the end users, you don't know whether like 100 users are going to use or 1000 users are going to use at any particular time. So uh, the Snowflake, uh, there are no uh, indexes, there are no typical uh, database requirements um, for, for you to make it scale up. And then there is a horizontal scalability which is built in. So the servers, uh, depending on the number of queries hitting, uh, it will scale up and then it will scale down gracefully. Uh, same thing with MicroStrategy. So uh, you have to look at your infrastructure, you have to look at training of your end customers and then you have to look at all the security features to make sure it happens. 
Um, but yeah, essentially like dossiers is very friendly as I'm saying. So once they start uh, using it, they see the um, simplicity and the power of the platform. Um, the, sometimes there may be hesitation. So you may have to do a little bit more handholding depending on how um, valuable that customer is to you. Uh, but a lot of time um, they can pretty much hit the ground running after some initial training. And they get excited when they see like all the colors just changing in front of them when they are choosing certain different charts and colors and combinations uh, of, of, of the data just play out in real time in front of them. So uh, it is an exciting word for them also. Great. Um, and that's a, a good segue to the next question. Uh, how happy are your customers with a new reporting platform? And I think uh, the question, questioner uh, means your end customers here. And uh, what else are they asking for now at this point? Um, so the customers are very happy with the, uh, the with all the reports which we have launched uh, in production. So in production, the reports are somewhat managed um, from the engineering and uh, they can do certain amount of customization, uh, like what filters they need and um, what columns they want to see and so on. Um, but in terms of the full development, uh, we are still rolling that feature out. But purely in terms of, uh, um, you know, the reports which they are seeing, uh, they are highly impressed by that uh, compared to what they have been, uh, you know, experiencing otherwise. Um, what they are actually asking, uh, it's all about data all the time. So the things which they want to see is like, how can they get more data uh, as part of the reports which they are seeing and some of the um, the data they already have um, within their dealership and some of the data which we are providing. Um, so what is the best way? And uh, you know, you have to keep an eye on the performance also of the of the report. So we have to do some amount of uh, education there when they are mashing up the data from their platform. Uh, I mean, from our platform and their local data. So uh, some of those performance issues and some of the, the collaboration, of course, is a strong part. Uh, one of the biggest thing, as I, you know, probably people don't think is the security. So within a dealership, there are different people using the data. So how can we make sure that, you know, within the dealership, a manager sees the data of all the different um, uh, you know, account people working in the dealership, but the account people can only see their own data. So think through all the data security issues uh, within a dealership also. So those kind of questions will come up. Well, great, Mike. Uh, this was terrific. Thank you so much um, for your time <clears throat> and all the work that you're doing at Cox uh, Automotive is, is pretty fantastic uh, in partnership with us, of course. Uh, but what you've done in terms of implementing uh, cloud data warehousing with Snowflake, utilizing MicroStrategy on top of it uh, to improve performance and also to improve your cost structure uh, is great. But a lot of times what people get really excited about in organizations is then adding business value, increasing revenue, providing analytics to your end customers outside of Cox2. You, you really sort of accomplished a lot uh, in uh, a pretty ambitious time frame, and I know you have a lot more to come. So congratulations on all the work you've done. Uh, it's been fantastic working alongside you. And uh, I will hand it over to uh, Caitlin to wrap things up. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you Fong. Thank you, Myung. And lots of great questions today. Thank you all so much for joining us. And as a reminder, we do have our next episode of the Executive Series on May 12th. Please be sure to visit our website so you can register for that event. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day.